Hello, I'm Dr. Bruce Porter, Medical Director, First Hill Diagnostic Imaging at Swedish Medical Center in Seattle, Washington. This is the first in a series of short educational videos on the role that magnetic resonance imaging plays in the diagnosis and evaluation of breast cancer. What we'll be covering today are, is the first in a series of talks where we're going to discuss some of the basic principles of magnetic resonance imaging. Basically, what is it? How does it work? And why do we use it? We're going to focus on some of the principles behind MRI of the breast. In order to do so, it'll be important for us to take a short time to look at the physiology of breast cancer. That is, what is about different about the biology of breast cancer than normal tissues that allows us to see it so well with MR imaging. Then I'll show you some clinical examples of why MR has become such an important tool for the very early diagnosis of breast cancer, for the determination of its extent before surgery, and how we monitor patients after they've been treated. And again, this is the first of a series that we will go through over time. But we'll start out, first of all, by taking a look at the imaging modality which most people are comfortable with and familiar with, which is the mammogram. It's important to recognize that the mammogram is the one proven best examination for decreasing breast cancer death in what we call the screening situation. That is, general population, women over age 40, should get screening mammograms. This is different than what is called the diagnostic situation. The diagnostic situation is when a woman either presents with a palpable lump in her breast, maybe skin changes on her breast, or say a palpable lymph node under her arm, or if the screening mammogram has picked up a finding which might be suspicious for breast cancer. It's important to make the distinction between the screening situation and the diagnostic situation. The screening is general population with no particular indication. Diagnostic is when a, a particular question has, has arisen. And it's in the diagnostic situation that the more advanced tools, which we call adjunctive techniques, like magnetic resonance imaging, uh, ultrasound, and so on, are used. That is more complex than the usual situation. Some examples are patients with extremely strong family histories, what we call high-risk patients, or women whose mammograms are very, very dense. Dense breasts can not only increase the risk of breast cancer by itself, but it makes it more difficult for the mammogram to detect them, especially early. So MR particularly plays a role in the woman who's at high risk with dense breasts, for example. And also, if a patient has a diagnosis of breast cancer, the preoperative evaluation and planning for the surgeon and the patient, MR plays a really important role, as we will be seeing. So, in summary, basically this examination, the MR imaging or M MRI of the breast, is a problem-solving tool that we use in selected situations and in selected patients. Now, looking at the mammogram, the characteristic finding on the mammogram for cancer is the calcification. The calcification is this area of whiteness that you see on this mammogram, and this marker overlying the skin indicates that this woman felt a, a palpable lump in her breast which brought her to the mammogram. The mammogram then defines this area of malignant appearing calcification. Now this is a very substantial uh, mass. Sometimes the calcifications in the breast are more subtle, as we see here. Now this woman actually did feel this area as well, and the calcifications are characterized by the mammographer as malignant based upon their appearance, their distribution, and, and other factors. Now, it is possible, and this is very common with mammography, that a woman will come in in a screening situation where she has nothing palpable, but say she's 45 years of age, and she comes in for her mammogram, and in that situation, what we see is a mass. The mass here is seen on the mammogram because it is denser than the surrounding tissue in this woman whose breasts are predominantly fatty. And this is what we call a screening pickup. This woman would then go into the diagnostic situation where this mass would be evaluated for the possibility of, of malignancy. Once we have a diagnosis of malignancy, which is usually uh, determined by a biopsy, either using the mammogram to do the biopsy or perhaps another tool like ultrasound, we end up using multiple examinations. We call this a multi-modality evaluation. This is another patient 
where we see a typical irregular mass that has calcifications, these bright uh, white areas within it. It also has irregular margins and what we call speculation. These are characteristic patterns of malignancy on the mammogram. The ultrasound, which is commonly done in conjunction with the mammogram, shows in this situation an angular irregular mass, which is the dark area outlined here, with what we call architectural distortion surrounding it. Cancers, when they invade adjacent tissue, change the normal patterns that we see on ultrasound. And all these are features that we use to determine that this is a probably malignant mass. And the tool which we're going to be talking about in this series of, of presentations is the, is the third of the more common exams, which is called the Magnetic Resonance Imaging Exam, MRI or breast MRI. It is quite different in the sense that it is more of a functional and biological assessment it also gives us very anatomic pictures of breasts and breast cancer, but it also gives us information that tells, tells us that the biology of this tissue in the cancer is different than the surrounding normal tissues. And we'll go into why that tells us uh, or why that's important. So it's important to, for us now to step back a little bit and look at the biology of breast cancer. It's important to recognize that that breast cancers are mutations. These are tissues within the woman's breast that have undergone a mutation. And in order for them to grow and to hurt somebody, this, these, this mutation, this tissue which is mutated, has to have an, an increase in blood supply. It gets this energy from the abnormal blood vessels which it causes to be created. And in order to, to invade adjacent tissues, to metastasize, which means to go somewhere else and be able to live in a lymph node or somewhere else, or to hurt somebody or kill somebody, the, these tissues have to undergo this mutation. Once they do, they generate a rich network of abnormal blood vessels, or these corkscrew-like blood vessels that we see here, are mutations. And one of the things that allows us, in fact, the primary thing that allows us to see them with MR is that although there are more of them than usual, they are also leaky. So the, the liquid that we inject during the MR examination, every time it goes through this blood vessel network, it leaks through the wall and it'll show up as bright findings on the MR. And we can then use the computer to, to document not only the pattern of the arrival of the of the what we call contrast material but the way it behaves this is what's called a contrast enhancement curve what it's telling us is that as we inject it this is time on the horizontal axis and how bright it gets on the vertical axis we see that the contrast material came in very quickly because of all the blood vessels and then it does what we call washing out from those images, we can then produce a CAD or, or computer image where we overlay colors on top of the anatomic images. The color images tell us a lot about these abnormal blood vessels versus the normal vessels that surround it. We can do three-dimensional reconstructions of them in very high detail. And as a result of this, the MR examination is capable of picking up often extremely small tumors even in women with large and dense complex breasts down to the size of a small pea, which is four to five millimeters. And um, that plays a very important role, especially in women whose mammograms are characterized as dense, as we'll look at now. This is one of the clinical examples I'm going to show you. This is a woman, she's 46 years of age. She presented with a worrisome finding, which we always take very seriously, is a bloody nipple discharge uh, from her left breast. She had a very thorough and careful evaluation done, and the mammogram, as we see here, is, has very dense breast tissue. In this part of the breast, the breast is predominantly fatty. If the entire breast were fatty, the finding would probably be quite evident. But breast cancers are dense, similar to surrounding breast tissue, and therefore, in this situation, this mammogram is negative, dense but negative. An ultrasound was performed, and it did not demonstrate the abnormality. It, an attempt was made at what's called galactography. Galactography is where a little uh, cannula is put in the, the duct that is draining the bloody material, and an attempt is made to inject contrast material or the liquid into it to define the e extent of the abnormality. So and the next logical thing is MR imaging as a breast, because this is a serious feature. And even if one has never seen a breast MR before, 
knowing that this is the right breast and this is the left breast, you can see that there's a significant abnormality and a significant asymmetry involving a considerable portion of the lower outer quadrant of her left breast. If we look at this more carefully with very high resolution imaging, which we also do at the same time, you can see these duct-like structures with a parallel appearance here. This is clearly a, a malignant appearing pattern. This is normal breast tissue up higher. Um, this is a typical pattern for what we call ductal carcinoma in situ, meaning that it is growing within the ducts of the breast, and that's a common process that presents with bloody nipple discharge. But one of the things that MR really brings to this whole process is the three-dimensional perception that helps the surgeon and the patient understand what is the true extent of the abnormality. And the three-dimensional rendering you see here of the whole breast, there is this triangular shape area of abnormal enhancement, which is what we call the area that's getting brighter after the injection of the material. We can then march through the breast and look at it in sections. And again, you see the blood vessels draining this area of, of ductal carcinoma in situ. And then one can rotate them in different directions. This helps the patient understand what is the extent of her abnormality. It empowers her to make the decision together with the surgeon and to understand that this is, an, is a more extensive process than a small little lump and it may well lead to a mastectomy, which she ultimately had, but we'll, we still have something that's necessary. That is, we need to prove and have the pathologist confirm that what we think is a malignant process is, and we'll, we'll, we'll get into that in just a moment, but I want to show briefly the three-dimensional perspective that the MR brings, which is unique and unlike anything else. Now, in this case, it was very capable of documenting not only the extent of this abnormality, but the fact that this process had extended to the base of the nipple as well. So very important considerations in terms of the surgeon's perspective and to be able to remove the entire abnormality. And again, the three-dimensional perspective of MR is unique and there is nothing else that can do this as well. But in order to prove that what we think is malignant is malignant, we have to get tissue. And that's done with what's called a MR-guided biopsy, where we do the, an examination of the patient in the, in the MR scanner. We have a 3D program that allows us to be able to find the location of the abnormality. It tells us how deep to go with, it, with what's called a vacuum assisted biopsy apparatus. And here you can see the, the vacuum biopsy apparatus coming into the breast to draw out a sample, which is then sent to the pathologist. The pathologist was able to confirm that this was what we call DCIS, ductal carcinoma in situ. She went on appropriately to a mastectomy, and she's done very well after this. The MR allowed it to, us to determine it was there, what the extent was, to determine the proper treatment, and this is a, a good example of, of what it brings to the table. Now the next part of this video has to do with the role MR plays in the evaluation of patients who are at high risk for breast cancer. This is a woman who's 33. Her mother was diagnosed with breast cancer at age 40. She has multiple other siblings who have had breast cancer. Her mammogram was normal. She's a known breast cancer gene carrier, so-called BRCA2 gene carrier. These women are at very high risk of developing breast cancer. And she's young, that means that her breasts are usually denser, and her mammogram was read as normal. The mammogram is always very important in these patients because many times it will pick up the abnormality and these examinations work together, but the MR brings other things to it. And what we see on this image is that, the, remember the color is important. The red color is usually a reflection of this malignant vascular process that we talked about. And it, we see that in the center of this is what, what looks like an invasive ductal cancer, and surrounding it is more of that process that we just saw, which is the so-called ductal carcinoma in situ. We see the abnormality very clearly. A biopsy was performed and, and confirmed that, in fact, she did have an early infiltrating ductal cancer and DCIS of her right breast. You'll notice that there is some bright finding on the outside of both breasts. This is motion artifact. The MR examination from the patient's perspective can be a little bit challenging in, in a number of ways, but one of the more important ones is the patient needs to be able to hold still. 
because it's like a long time exposure. And with a little bit of motion, we can get some artifact. We recognize this, but it's best if we don't have it. So I, I decided to keep this case because it illustrates both early detection of a breast cancer as well as one of the issues, which is motion. This examination is motion free, but it does detect in a 45 year old woman in a similar situation, high risk surveillance with dense negative mammograms, a focal area in her right breast which is not only brighter than anything around, but the CAD system has identified that this area, which measures six and a half millimeters in size, is abnormal based upon both its shape as well as what we call the enhancement kinetics. That is, you see the red color, the red and yellow colors, which are indicative of a concern for malignancy. The size of this, six millimeters, is basically the size of a pea. In this situation, we elected to use ultrasound. We knew what, it, what shape it was, we knew where it was, and we go with ultrasound and find in the area that we expect something with a similar size, shape, and configuration. Do an ultrasound-guided needle biopsy using ultrasound to, to locate the, the abnormality, to sample it with a biopsy. We leave a little metal clip after the biopsy, which is then something you can see on the mammogram that allows the surgeon later to go back to this location because this was a tiny curable cancer detected because this patient had an MR scan. She um, was sent to surgery. A localization was done of the marker clip. She's done very, very well. Now we've seen that MR is capable of detecting even small breast cancers in, in patients at high risk. But the other side of it, which is very, very important in terms of quality of life, is when we get a normal exam. This is a woman 52 years old. She's a known breast cancer gene carrier. She's undergoing what we call high risk surveillance. This is a normal breast MRI. You see there are no bright spots, there's no color. These are just normal blood vessels in a normal breast. And one of the things that I want people to take away from this video is that a normal breast MRI, even in a situation of very high risk, is one of the most reliable tests that we have in medicine. We will typically see the woman in a year. She'll get a mammogram at six months. That is, the, the exams are staggered by six months. But what this means is that it approaches 100 percent. It's 99 percent what we call negative predictive value. And what that means for her, for her is peace of mind. And we'll see her again in a year. So in summary, the mammogram is the primary tool for the breast cancer screening in the general population and for the initial evaluation of masses that are detected in a, in a breast. MR of the breast, breast MRI, is a really powerful tool that can help the mammogram detect cancer in difficult circumstances, particularly in women with dense breasts and those who are scheduled for surgery and who have had a diagnosis of breast cancer. And this is particularly useful and particularly important for women who are at high risk for developing breast cancer, both because it is capable of, of detecting very small cancers and capable of very nearly excluding the probability of cancer, which improves the patient's quality of life significantly.